cozy. That's how I felt. Tucked beneath what may have been the world's softest blanket. I took a deep breath and rolled it onto my side and it was a familiar moment, the moment when my 6 a.m. alarm clock sounded after a night of tossing and turning. The moment when my daily responsibilities had to beckon me. The moment when the clouds of my imagination felt more real writing lines of code for my business. In a few minutes, I would answer the same questions I had faced every weekday for the past several years. Should I stay in bed or should I work on my side business? At the time I was working as a programmer from for a New York City media company, balancing a full-time job with responsibilities of scaling my startup business, Jotform, taught me a lot about myself. Among other things, I learned that I was somewhat risk averse. The typical path of raising venture capital wasn't appealing to me. Additionally, I had some someone who was highly valued with personal freedom and I didn't want to take make myself beholden to anybody. This meant two things. I had to prioritize profitability from day one and two, in order to experience consistent gains in my business, I had to consistently beat my arch nemesis, procrastination. Good morning, guys. Coach Mike Huston. And today I'm going to do, as they say in church, the reading from a very strong article. I shared this with several clients and I got a bunch of feedback. And we had actually had a lot of conversations about this. And um, this is a very important subject as we move forward in some of the fundamentals. And I think, you know, all of the talk that we have about uh, becoming great salespeople and building relationships and prospecting and following up and all of those things. At the end of the day, guys, there's an element of our business and our lives that we put off and we have to overcome this. Now, this is not going to be the end all, as I've discussed with, my, with some of my clients. However, it is something that I think is important to read into. So I'm going to actually go through the article. I'm going to read it, and I'm going to let you take it from there to listen to it over and over again, because I believe it's a very, very powerful force in helping us to make a decision. Do we want to stay where we are? Is it affecting our self-esteem, our bank accounts, our self-concept, how much we like and respect ourselves? All of these factors that relates to putting off what we know we should be doing. And this procrastination thing is an important area. In the end of the day, it takes work to go through this process, but it doesn't have to be that overwhelming. And we'll talk about that today. So as you listen to this today, how does this apply to your business? This is from a gentleman who Open a company called Jotform, and it's a mind mapping program that kind of helps you keep on task with your business and your life. It's actually pretty cool. I don't use it. I use another one that is uh, a part of my business. But at the end of the day, this was a pretty profound article. So think about as I'm going through this today, how is this going to apply to me? What does this mean to me? And what can I do to make a change in what I'm currently doing? So this is what we're going to talk about. Here's my biggest realization. And the reason we avoid completing a task at every given moment are extremely personal and commonly touted productivity hacks. Don't always cut it. I want to share with you my experience of overcoming a procrastination while scaling a side project in, into a company that now employs more than 130 people. Now, for some of you guys listening to this, that's not a huge business, but you'll get this as we move through it. But before we dive in, it might be interesting to take a look at how two types of founders handle procrastination. The venture capitalist back founders versus bootstrappers who build their startups without any outside funding. Are bootstrappers more likely to procrastinate? Bootstrappers like myself aren't the only entrepreneurs who sometimes grapple with the snooze button. However, venture capitalist back founders may have a slight psychological advantage compared to, the, to their bootstrapping counterparts. The pressure that comes with taking somebody else's money. But that's not all. 
venture capitalist backed founders are motivated to pay investors back sooner the sooner rather than later for another reason once a company has grown accustomed to a certain level of spending scaling back becomes next to impossible should the company fail to gain any traction within 12 to 18 months it could very well become another failure of st or statistic thus the venture capital back founder who doesn't feel like sending out any emails monday or making any calls in the morning has a very much of an incentive to do so. Conversely, the bootstrapper must learn how to push through procrastination without the motivating force of a ticking clock in a room full of unhappy investors. I encountered this learning curve while building Jotform in 2006. It was my first year in business and my bedroom served as my company headquarters. Well, I love to be in, the, into a, in a building, a user-friendly form builder to help uh, organizations enhance productivity, the temptation to procrastinate sometimes got the best of me. Whether it was a full, whether it was the lull of my comfy bed or the laughter of my promised favorite TV show, my home office was riddled with distractions. During this time, I read many books about entrepreneurs, productivity, procrastination. Sometimes their advice worked for me and other times it didn't. The real reason we procrastinate. When I became especially curious about this topic of procrastination, I often wondered, why do we delay doing the task that gets us closer to the things that we want? Through self-observation, one thing became clear. There was always a reason for my procrastination. Whenever I noticed the urge to put something off, I tried to ask myself, why? Surely enough with my mind always answered, okay, why? Once I have identified the real problem that was causing the feeling of avoidance, I could develop an appropriate plan of action to reclaim my productivity. Now, as simple as it sounds, identifying the root problem is somewhat contrary to the common advice. Now, guys, the Internet is filled with articles and advice to give us to push through feelings of resistance. Heidi Grant, a social psychologist and Harvard Business Review contributor, echoes the sentiment. Quote, sometimes, somewhere along the way, we've all been brought into this idea without consciously realizing it that, it's, that, it, that to be motivated and effective, we need to feel like we want to take action. I really don't know why we believe this because it's 100% nonsense. Unquote. Well, I completely agree and often written about the, how organizational systems can enhance productivity, I believe something extremely important is overlooked. Productivity hacks are only effective when you know why you are avoiding something in the first place. Just do it. Isn't a sustainable solution for beating the chronic procrastination if we repeatedly find ourselves avoiding certain tasks and underlying problem need, needs to be addressed. Once we've identified the real clause, we can then search for the right productivity hacks and solutions to meet our needs. So here are some common reasons that I figured out that leads us to procrastinate. Number one, we feel like we're not making progress. Think back to the last time you started a new project. You probably felt excited and you about executing that new marketing strategy, blog content, or programming hack. Fast forward to a couple of weeks and you now find yourself approaching the same task with a twinge of discouragement. Observe the real procrastination mindset in action. And it's probably saying something like, my hard work isn't being rewarded. This isn't fun. Science says humans are intrinsically more motivated by instant gratification than delayed gratification. Considering that worthwhile projects are rarely built overnight, this tendency is annoyingly inconvenient. The solution? Stanford University behavioral scientist and lecturer B.J. Fogg recommends creating systematic behavioral changes that correspond with small wins. In other words, create your own way to celebrate small milestones. According to Fogg, every task should be accompanied by a trigger, and the easier the action, the better. Say you're committed to writing content for a website or a blog. I'm going to add that in. You might make an agreement with yourself to write one paragraph after each time you use the restroom and continue to follow this trigger 
throughout the day. Now, once you've completed the task, Fogg urges you to celebrate in a predetermined manner. The celebration could be as simple as treating yourself to a piece of chewing gum or active as taking a bike ride through your favorite part of the town. Treat the series of actions like a game. Trigger, task, celebration. Why do this? Why does this work? Creating small wins provides an incentive. Write this down, guys, an incentive to keep working toward the finish line. Eventually, the actions create a habit and may become more enjoyable. Number two, we are not sure where to start. Another common reason for procrastination. Another common reason for procrastination. Having so much to do that we're not sure where to begin. During the early days of building JotForm, I wasn't sure what work, what to work on. With seemingly endless tasks begging for my attention, I often ended up procrastinating with low-value activities. Now, based on my conversations with other founders, I know my experience was far from unique. A lack of organizational systems leads to unnecessary feelings of overwhelm, confusion, and avoidance. So here's the key. One, acknowledge that it's normal to feel uncertain when beginning something new. Two, brainstorm with mentors, advisors, and friends how to best prioritize your time. This is what a lot of my conversations came down to, guys, the other day. The more systems we put in place, the less we find ourselves procrastinating. I'm reminded of the importance of, of this each year when I visit my family. They own a small olive farm that runs like a well-oiled machine. No pun intended. Everyone knows what needs to happen first, second, and third, and when the harvest when to harvest the fruit. With no room for guesswork, procrastination is virtually non-existence. Three, we're afraid of failing. This is the unofficial mantra of Silicon Valley tech founders. Fail fast, fail often. However, look beneath the surface and different image begins to emerge. Ambitious entrepreneurs who are terrified of making a bad decision. As one anonymous insider shared with management consultant and Forbes contributor uh, Rob Ashkar, many people here do talk about embracing failure, but that's usually just hype. Many of them fear any kind of failure, and the pressure to succeed is so intense that some new businesses, instead of finding themselves looking for shortcuts. While some founders cope with taking shortcuts, others stall out due to perfectionism. Write that down. This tendency shows up in the form of delayed launch dates, missed deadlines, and productivity, productive procrastination. During the early days, it wasn't uncommon for me to spend a ridiculous amount of time on tasks that didn't really matter. Meanwhile, I was missing out on opportunities to grow our customer base, to forge business partners, and even help more organizations enhance their productivity, user-friendly forms. It hurt their client base, guys. The other re this was another reason I made the controversial decision to forego venture capital. I knew the pressure of, on, uh, of a board looking over my shoulder would clash with my inner perfectionism. Does that mean I never, I never procrastinate for fear of failure? No, but I could be gentle with myself when it happened. It's not necessary. It's not necessarily the sky high standards that slow you down, but the sky high standards mixed with a belief that your performance is tied to your self worth, says Ellen Hendrickson, Boston University psychologist. That combination can grind you to a halt. Hendrickson rec recommends that we should consistently remind ourselves of the crucial difference between who we are and what we achieve. Easier said than done, but it is sound advice. Number four, we dislike a task itself. Surprise, surprise. The most common reason for procrastination may actually be disliking the task at hand. You've heard me talk about this, guys. It's no secret that building a business involves several moving parts. Understandably, everyone enjoys some tasks more than others. One person may have an affinity to cold email campaigns, while others would rather play in traffic. In such instances, Harvard Business Review contributor Heidi Grant recommends using something she calls 
if-then planning. The process involves identifying the specific steps needed to complete a task, more importantly, where and when you will do it. For example, if it's 11 a.m., then I will stop what I'm doing and cold email prospects. Grant claims that the process is different than relying on sheer willpower alone. Personally, I find it more effective to ask targeted questions. What could happen if I complete this task? What could happen if I don't complete this task? What is my overreaching vision? Why does it matter? Once I reconnect with my goals and remind myself of my potential outcomes, I am back on track. Obviously, there is no right way to deal with procrastination. These are just some of the methods that I've worked for me to overcome the years of procrastination. Everyone has unique personality quirks, intentional and internal motivation, and reasons for procrastination. Translation, the newest productivity hack everyone is raving about may not work for you, and that's okay. Identify your personal reasons for procrastination, apply the best suited advice, and ignore the rest. And oh, do your best to hit not to hit the snooze button, no matter how cozy your bed might feel. Guys, take a look at what's most important to you, put things in a systematic approach, and you will overcome this hesitancy to put off what you need to do today. So go back to this recording, listen to it at realprofitbuilders.com. I thank you for your time in this very, very important area of your business and your life. Don't put it off. Go to realprofitbuilders.com and listen to this recording again and again and again. And stop putting off what you need to do today. Talk to you later. Have a great day.